What's happening, party people? Man, I don't know how people have a full-time job and live life. I don't seem to have enough time to half brush my teeth after I eat with all this stuff going on. I am in Cincinnati. I am headed to Michigan tomorrow afternoon so I can be at that car show Saturday. And we'll be at the Gilmore Car Museum for a Volvo Saab car show they are having Saturday. It gates open at 8, uh, closes at 4. Uh, hopefully it won't be too hot. Uh, there's a museum there. I don't think Mita's has ever been in a car museum, so I got tickets to take her in there. And we'll be hanging out with some Volvo folks. Should be a great show. I think the weather's going to be nice. I need to check the weather and get to hang out with my buddy Dan and whoever else makes it out there to that Gilmore show. So that's what's going on. In today's video, I was in Houston helping Arian and uh, got a couple things done. Not as much as I wanted, so I will be there another day. But hey, you take all the wins you can when you're tinkering on these old cars. So... That's it for this video. I'm going to try to connect with Andrew, make sure uh, Red Baron is running right, try to connect with James. He's got a coolant leak he needs to get fixed. I was going to try to get with Tony and do a, a clutch install, but there's no way I have enough time for that. So and then Mita's coming in like midnight tonight, and we got some business to take care of tomorrow before we hit the road. So. That's where we're at. I appreciate you all watching. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment. And see you soon. Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert. That's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. Kicking off the day, going for my walk. This place is dripping wet without rain. Mm, mm, mm. Grass being watered by the morning dew. God's country. Time to get cracking. It's supposed to be four degrees warmer today than it was yesterday. Woo woo. And man, barely a cloud in the sky. It's beautiful out here. As long as you're looking and not working. <laughs> we are waiting on the park for this 240. And we have, man, some monster spacers on here. Good Lord. I thought these spacers was... bolted in, but it looked like somebody added new studs there. Now these tires here, 29th week of 2018, look good on the outside, but there's minor cracking in there and cracking in the threads. It's a shame. Such good thread. These threads are not worn down probably 20%. And the tires are bad. When they get cracking like that, that means dry rot. And dry rotted tires are slick, especially in the rain. Now this caliper is locked up. And it is eating way into the rotor. So we're going to try to get this off of here. I got the parking brake set. And it is holding. Let me go ahead and pull the parking brake off. Doesn't have a hole pin on the rotor. But I'm concerned about getting the line off of here. This thing looks pretty rusty. And I doubt that line's going to come out. You can see the brake pad is totally worn down on this thing. With probably both sides. If you knock these pins out and pull the pads out, if you could get them out with them eating into this rotor like this. And uh, do have some rust down here. Let me see if I can see the dang line. Where the line comes in. 
Might have to lower this because I jacked it up by that, which is not ideal. But it gets the tire off the ground quicker. But now I don't see the brake line. It's probably coming in on this side up top. I had to stick my head in there. Take my hat off. Take off my sombrero. And uh, spray that down, see if it'll come loose. I think I'm prepared to go get lines for this thing, but heck, it may not even come out on the other side. It's back there where they hit the valve. That looks a little rusted too, so here's where the line comes in. We're gonna see if we can get that loose. Let me get some PB Blaster and spray it. To my surprise, both of my spanner wrenches are power torques. One of them has a pivoting head, the other one doesn't, but they got to fit real tight. And I don't think this one fits real tight, but let me try this one first. The nut back there is in the left. Well, folks, a miracle happened and that nut broke loose. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the two bolts out of the caliper, try to get the caliper off because I believe we have new calipers. Then release the parking brake, try to get this rotor off and go in with a new rotor and caliper it's got that thing on the back of that and i guess that's going to come off too so let me get the tool and get the calipers off and there it is folks it is loose let me go release the parking brake see if i get that rotor off and go find those parts in the house and put this thing back together but i've heard of pads being worn down that much and seeing pictures of worse rotors but hadn't seen them personally I think I gotta get that thing off. Let me go find these parts. I got the new caliper screen in there, but I gotta get this piece off of there. And um, I don't see what that one will bolt onto there. The new calipers don't have that. Uh, yeah, they don't have it. We're up, bro. I don't know if you wanna get some calipers with that on it or not. I don't know if you want to get some more calipers with that on it or not. Not sure how important this piece is to the new caliper. The new caliper don't have a place for that to bolt on to. Took the pads out and the shims are missing. The squeal shims. But uh, that's how the pads look. Mm, didn't have any meat on them. Sunroof is jacked up because the motor it's not sitting all the way up tight into the frame. That tip there has to go in that little slot there in that motor. The other piece there has to fit perfectly in there because this little ring here on the tip of this motor teeth has to go in that hole so these teeth can sit around this gear properly. So, let me see if I can get this up. It's a little difficult to get this motor to sit up here tight. And it's slipping. It's working, but it's not tight enough in there, it seems like. Sunroof repair. We got the motor locked up in there. And... It's secured back up. We actually put nuts on the top side that pull this motor up real tight in here. So, shouldn't have a problem with slipping too much. There it goes again. It's slipping. Slipping again? Yeah. You think it's too tight? You can't even close it? It's slipping. It's slipping again. Here I am at this XC90. Somebody needs a bolt at the top of the transmission. I don't know if I got a tool big enough for that or not. But I brought my 24, biggest I have, and it is too small. Maybe a 26 or something. I got it. 
crescent wrench. Maybe it's big enough. Man, look how big that freaking caliper is. That thing's better than my shoe. That's about a size six. And then it's on that caliper. Let me go ahead and see if my crescent wrench will get that off. Then I got to go get a sunroof. Found the car they had a picture of, but said they did not have. Sunroof is rusted. But the sunroof assembly, probably not. So I found another black connector back there by the fuel pump. Stripped the little wires off. Now I'm going to hit it with the jump box. Make sure it opens all the way. Closes all the way. Raises up all the way. Closes. Do it three times. If it keeps working, I'm going to pull it. Tried it three times. It didn't work. I, then I tried it. I came out here. Beat on the top of it. Then tried it and slid right back. So something's jammed up, messed up. But let's see if it'll run through three full cycles. Okay, let's go ahead and start it. And I'm going to run it close. Might have run up that time. Nope, but it seemed like it closed tight. I oh, heard some guy screaming. He said, let's go. And they have closed the registers. I can't even get the sunroof. If I pulled it, I couldn't even pay for it. They didn't tell me that when I was coming out here. They was about to close. So I'm screwed another day. Made it back from the salvage yard. Totally empty-handed. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, I didn't notice he had them nice fog light guards on there. Anyway, we're going to drop the battery in the 240. We're going to start the car. See if we can rev up the engine on the car with it cold. Because it was running idling fine when it was cold. Then we're going to change this temp sensor. I'm getting distracted. Look like this strut mount is blown. So I'm going to grab my tool, see if this turns. Then we're going to try to get that sensor. Oh, we're going to get this battery moved over. We're going to go at this temp sensor, 19 millimeter. It's down in there, somewhere in there. Yeah, I can see it there. I don't know if I could reach it to unplug it, but I'm sure going to try. So let me reach down there, see if I can unplug that thing, and see if I can reach a tool down there and get it off. I do have a tool on this temp sensor down there. I unplugged this vacuum hose here. I unplugged this here, moved it out of the way. I unplugged the plug on the throttle position sensor just so I could reach around in there and grab it. So I stuck one hand down here because my hands are small and I pulled on the wire when I stuck the other hand up here and released the trigger on the plug to get it unplugged. Now I got a three inch extension, a six inch extension, a 19 millimeter, and this here, I'm gonna break this loose. Be careful you don't wedge your weight against this throttle position sensor and destroy it, so don't do that. And let's see if we can break it loose and fish the other one down in there. Got that linkage back in there. It goes from here all the way up to there. We got them in, put the law off, blah, blah, blah. It is working. So let me get the pull back in, put the protector back in, hook this back up, put the door panel back on, hook the speakers up. We be good to go. And to test the latch, throw that, grab this, pull that back. Good to go. We owned out the temp sensor on this car with the ohm meter set at 20k we pulled the sensors out of the freezer let them sit a little while they were both cold they both read like 1.02 ohms then we put a match under them heated them up for about 10 seconds and they both read about 2.9 2.45 ohms so 
we think the sensor's fine, the temp sensor. But we got in the car, we started it, and the jet doesn't seem like it has a fuel pressure. It's like the pump's not getting the power that it should. So as long as I jumped the fuses four and six, the car ran fine. I was able to rev it up, it held revs, all that stuff. Once I pulled the jump wire from fuses four and six, I couldn't hit the gas, it was sputter, it was like, wasn't enough gas. So there's something going on that's killing the fuel pump or not giving enough fuel pressure or something when that jump wire is off. So we're gonna try to troubleshoot that. We read the codes on the blinky thing over here. And on port two, we got uh, one, two, three, and on port six, we got a two, two, four. So we're gonna look those codes up, see if they make any sense in helping us. And, oh, I didn't plug that temp sensor back in. You, I think you did. No, I didn't plug it in. The temp sensor? Yeah, it's not plugged in. Let me plug this temp sensor in. I think I'm actually moonwalking today. I got a sunroof totally blown out of a car over here. Doesn't work. Went to go get a sunroof, that didn't work. Got this car running just like it was yesterday or worse. Changed the temp sensor. Tested the temp sensor. Nothing's fixed. I did fix that door. Hooray. So all day long, I got a door fixed. How about that? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I did have another win. I got that brake replaced back there. So I got two things done. Let me go ahead and call it a night. Jump on this stuff early in the morning, have dinner at a decent hour. It's almost 8 o'clock. Night, night. That was it. Kind of a tough day. I did more troubleshooting than I actually did accomplishing fixing things. But that's how it is sometimes. You do your best. Can't do no better than that. I appreciate you all watching. Catch you tomorrow.